Hi, everybody. Welcome to our second international poetry show. And it's live on Facebook. It's been organized by Shabdagutsho International Poetry uh, Magazine. You can later see it on my YouTube account. Now, I do have several international guests who are going to perform their poems first. I have Amir or Amir is a poet from Israel and uh, he is very well known internationally. His poetry has been translated into more than 50 languages. And uh, he just got an award last night from Istuga Poetry Festival. He is also the recipient of uh, Homer Medal, Homer European uh, Medal for Poetry and Art. 2019, he also got European Atlas uh, for uh, Lyrics uh, Award. So we are gonna hear from him uh, very quickly. Amir, stand by. Next, I have John Digby, who is a professor at Long Island University, creative writing professor, a publisher, a poet, who composed music for a while, just told me, and a great face. Please stand by, John Digby. And next, we do have Eric uh, from Poland, even great artist and poet who has a studio. He also do the virtual studio thing. He brought it to New York once and everybody was completely stunned by that. Uh, me too. So Eric, stand by. We have Laura Boss. Uh, Laura Boss is the editor of Leaves for many, many years. And she received her first Poetry Society Contest uh, Award. And she also attended the Stuga Poetry Festival. That was 2016 of Poetry Festival. She represented US. She has been having a little trouble with the mic, but we'll uh, get around it. Laura, stand by. So without further ado, let's uh, bring Amir. Uh, let me see if I can bring everybody together. Yes, these are my guests. And let's bring Amir for his first presentation. Amir is going to read two poems back to back. All right, we lost Amir for some reason, but the show must go on. Uh, John, please present your poem. As soon as, uh, as Amir comes up, we'll uh, listen to his poetry. Please okay, welcome John Good Dickley. morning, everybody. Okay. Um, a little bit of background, which is that my actual literary field is animal fables. And the press that I run is the New Feral Press, which comes from feral cats, about which you'll hear later. So the first poem I'm going to read is a poem about myself, and it's called Body Language. My legs are trying to tell me something. Every day new hieroglyphs appear as purple veins, bloody messages I have to decipher. Some curl like withered flower petals. Others form a V like geese in the sky, but without honking or giving any hint of meaning or direction. Yesterday, two lines emerged in black, Morse code for the letter M, and above them, a river with tiny tributaries changing the landscape of my thighs like minnow shapes that swim and dart below my skin. I would call them beauty marks or little friends and bid them welcome were it not that they are disturbing memos signaling time in the body language of age. Thank you. Your second you poem, will. please. Second poem is an allegory 
called the fox, which I'm certain you will understand the minute you listen. In the medieval bestiary, the fox is a symbol of evil, duplicity, and fraud. His red coat and coal black eyes, projections of the devil burning in hellfire. Our coal loving demon is but a hologram, a projection of fake Fox News with his fake red hair and trumped up speeches he can barely read, concocted <laughs> by fake reporters scratching his tail for money. Before long, the fox puppet will become an ornament, a collar or hairpiece of fake fur that lasts but a season and then is tossed away. Wow, that's really <laughs> something. <laughs> a well-known allegory. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for your wonderful You're presentation. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got Amir back. So let me uh, get Amir here. Amir, hi. hi Sorry I'm for here. that uh, problem you had, but you are on now. So yeah, we are here now. Yes. So the first poem is a chat with the Kavafis poem, uh, Waiting for the Barbarians. And in Kavafi's poem, uh, if you remember, the barbarians never came. Here they do come, and uh, you are welcome to find out where from. One of the great I poems I read it before. Thank you. Pardon? I said one of the great poems I read it before. I know this poem. Go ahead. Okay, I read it first in Hebrew. Habarbarim, Sibuv Sheni. Lola Shab Hikinula Barbarim. לא לשב נקהלנו בחיקר העיר, לא לשב עטו גדולנו את בגדי כבודם ושינינו את נאומם לכבוד המאורע, לא לשב ניתצנו מקדשנו ובנינו אחרים לאליהם, כדת שרפנו את ספרנו אשר אין חפץ בם לאנשים כאלה, כדבר הנבואה באו הברברים ונטלו מיד המלך את מפתחות העיר, אך בבואם עטו לבוש כלבוש הארץ ומנהגם היה מנהג המדינה, ואת ציוו עלינו בלשוננו, לא ידענו עוד מתי באו הברברים. The Barbarians, Round 2. It was not in vain that we awaited the barbarians. It was not in vain that we gathered in the city square. It was not in vain that our great ones put on their official robes and rehearsed their speeches for the event. It was not in vain that we smashed our temples and erected new ones to their gods. As proper, we burned our books that have nothing in them for people like that. As the prophecy foretold, the barbarians came and took the keys to the city from the king's hand. But when they came, they wore the garments of the land and their customs were the customs of the state. And when they commanded us in our own tongue, we no longer knew when the barbarians had come to us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and uh, the second poem has to do with uh, relationship and desire because you know, when a couple, uh, when they become very good friends, uh, very often uh, this familiarity uh, kills uh, the erotics. And uh, in a way, uh, we need distance to keep desire alive. So this is what it is about. Come, come, let's make love, not reality. I've got no strength left to die and to die. This otherness, yours and mine, is less dangerous. No, don't even try to understand me. On the contrary, treat me like an enemy. Spy on me nimbly, be alert, write down all the guard posts, all the secret passages, the accomplices, the assassins. In short, prepare as much as you can. Later, the die will be cast, and it will no longer be clear 
who is the double agent and what is the motive for murder and who tore up the game board. Neither will it be clear whose report is above full stop. Read again, read between the lines, recode, destroy all evidence. Ready? Come then, let's make love. Wow. wow. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Um, uh, you have yeah, really yeah. added a new voice to the world poetry and congratulations. Thank uh, you. We'll, co we'll come back to you. Yeah. Just stand by. Uh, now I'm going to, ladies and gentlemen, introduce you Jaroslaw Pozarowski from Poland. He is an artist, a poet, winner of a couple of awards. Uh, he is the, a member of Homer Committee, which is uh, last couple of years making a noise all over the world. <laughs> so without further ado, please perform your poem. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Everything yes, is good. good. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I want to say first that it's a great honor for me to be here with you uh, to represent uh, Europe and Poland, my my country. Yes, at my heart, I'm always from Poland. Yeah, but now I want to say something about the poetry. Yes, uh, the poetry I wrote uh, it was presented uh, last year uh, on Yale and uh, perhaps it will be a great honor to me to read uh, uh, some pieces from this uh, if you only want yes please uh, this is the book content shepherd lips it was illustrated by my friend from new york uh, mark polyakov great designer and great artist and uh, first poem which ought to be read here is besides are you ready for besides hassan al are you ready yes yes we are ready the world is ready go ahead okay we live side by side swaying with the wind at times our branches briefly whipped by the air will touch maybe the wind maybe this wind perhaps we live side by side, right alongside, maybe. Touch my bark, please, maybe. Carve your name, maybe stay, stay. Stay here a while, please. We live side by side, swaying with the wind. At times our branches briefly whipped by the air will touch. Maybe the wind, maybe this wind. Perhaps. Touch my bark, please. Perhaps care for your name. Maybe stay. Stay here a while, please. Maybe this wind. Maybe the wind. Perhaps. That was the first? Accident. Go ahead. The second one. Family negatives. I take apart the beams of the shattered house, set the walls once more upright. I fit new windows to the world, supposedly open. But is that all? All that is supposedly still to come. There is something else, something else. It's worthwhile. I take apart the beams and weep to myself. I don't actually say it. I tell no one. Love has been a little worn out, a little left to rot. Words which lit up like torches, spill it on the grass, scourge its roots. Will an epic as grow? No one, not today, not yet. No one knows. Thank you. Thank you. Can you say a little bit of uh, Polish in, in, uh, in the first couple of lines in Polish? Uh, you want to uh, say something about uh, this uh, poem, or uh, write is in uh, in in Poland? You could you could you could read a short poem in Polish. Uh, okay, I will translate. <laughs> <laughs> you can okay find one in the next round. You will 
the first poem you're gonna read in Polish. Okay, so okay, stand by. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will introduce you, Laura Boss. Laura is gonna read her first poem, two poems, Laura. Right. Yes. So this first poem, um, thank you again, Hussan, and hi to my international colleagues and my colleagues uh, on this platform with me. So this first poem is called The Best Lover. It's from my book, The Best Lover, um, uh, published by New York Quarterly. The Best Lover. I tell every man I'm with that he's the best lover I've ever had. He always believes me. I feel if he asks me, then that's the only answer he wants to hear. And somehow at that moment after lovemaking, I almost believe it myself. Maybe it's not so different from when someone asks you, which of your books do you think is your best? And you almost always answer, it's my most recent. And the second poem I'm going to Excellent. read, um, that was one of my shortest poems, is called Family Promises. And it's from the new manuscript I'm working on um, with the title, Family Promises. When I was 16, my mother made me promise not to tell my father he was dying of pancreatic cancer. She made me promise not to tell my 13-year-old brother. She asked me to care for my father while she was teaching since I was home by 12.30 from my double session high school while she didn't get home from public school 11 until after 4. My father had a naturally sweet disposition and I learned how pain could change even the sunniest of natures. I learned to lie that fall. I lied to my father who wanted to believe he'd recover from painful pancreatitis. I lied to my brother. I learned to lie by omission. I smiled and lied to my best friend, my teachers, my friends on the school paper when they asked me if I were all right. I even lied to my mother and told her I was not depressed as she managed to teach and do lesson plans and spend nights with my father as a tiny black and white TV droned on, mostly Yankee games that he couldn't focus on, as we all waited for the nurse who lived next door to arrive with a morphine shot prescribed by her husband, a resident at Memorial Hospital in Manhattan. After my father died, my mother spiraled into depression, though she continued to teach. My brother turned atheist, I learned to keep smiling and lying and for years saying I was fine, no matter what random disaster plummeted toward me and those I loved. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, I could see the whole picture while you were reading the poem. Uh, you know, I always like your poetry and my wife translated one of your poem and it's in her nice. first book. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now is my turn. Uh, please stand by. I'm going to read two poems. Uh, these are translated from Bengali, and I'm reading from this book, Under the Thin Layers of Light. Last year, this became the best-selling book, which was surprising. Poetry does not become best-selling, but it did. So I was so happy. And Stanley Barkan is the publisher. The first poem is a love poem, Anxiety in the Milky Way. This is the bewildering body of that poem whose emotion-drenched eyes last night made me passionate. Sitting in a dream class room of an astounding house surrounded with tall trees and trenched in cricket's hum, I relish each and every twist and turn of her lustrous limbs, completely sleepless throughout the whole night. Starting from the toenail, Gliding up through the smoothness of the slender body, 
to the soil of her perfumed hair. Last night, every cell of her shape was in my total control. As if I were a brazen bison of 22, a vibrating valiant, and she was an unveiled virgin of blooming 18. I entirely dissolved into her luminous labyrinth. No, it's not a dream. Believe me, I was up for the whole night with my new poem plunging deep into the success in the casket filled up with the proposition of the wind. I perfumed through, I permeated through the fortunate greens of the earth and totally, and today walked out hand in hand victorious. You know, after all, he herself is a post-modernist. Thank you for listening. That was my love poem. And this one is not a love poem. It says, this hand. This hand is a postulate of a post-modern poem. Removing the drastic dust of modernism hastily, it brings mind and moment to the heart of human heritage. Cool, robust, crafty, gentle, and tranquil, artistically composed and mutually supportive. This hand is of Africa at the hazy sites of Asia, a vigorous treatment of temporal time, accepting amulets of the rest human beings and their staggering survival in New York City. This hand turns momentarily further apiece. Visiting the refugee camp of Kosovo, supplying bottles of milk to the naked, hungry children of Iraq, sitting beside the arsenic scalded, less fortunate housewives of Bangladesh, and washing out the headache with tears. This hand rises up against the nuclear terror 52 weeks a year. Thank you for listening. Let me bring up all my guests. All right. Okay. Here is everybody. Uh, it looks like it's 10.28. We spent 28 minutes. Let me ask a question, Amir. How is the corona situation in your city? How is everything going on there? Well, most things are open, but uh, we have uh, many people uh, sick, and we are a red country. And uh, it's not nice, you know. It's like uh, we are. It's like a like a curfew in which you cannot leave Israel. We can hardly go anywhere. Uh, well, I hope it uh, will be over soon. It's really, for me, it's a big change. Yeah, because you travel a lot. That's true. And That's this year, I was supposed to go to Poland in two Polish uh, international poetry festival, and both are canceled. So, <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, is quite a few. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I guess that you missed a lot, too. Actually, in the beginning, I used it, uh, you know, like a retreat, because I'm working on a novel about the life of Moses. Mm. But slowly, slowly it gets to you because people mm. are kind of tense. And uh, by now it's impossible to write here. Interesting. A novel mm. of the life of Moses. Yes, yes. I'm going to be the first reader. <laughs> You're most welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, John, how are you doing? How's John? Well. John is doing okay. He watches cricket for six hours a day. He's a Brit, 
So he's upstairs watching endless test matches. Um, I've been writing a lot, also working in clay a lot at home. But when I get to the other poems, you'll see what a blow I was struck by my now former university, Long Island University, where I took care of the feral cat colonies for more than 25 years. And the university evicted me and evicted the cats. So you'll see uh -huh. how that plays out. And for me, that's the saddest. I can't ever go back to campus. And uh, I think that's the, the most suffering. But it is a pleasure to be talking with everybody without masks on and being able to see <laughs> yes. everybody's face. Distant talking. So, this is delightful. It's really delightful. Yeah, we are talking about John, uh, her husband, uh, who is also a professor and uh, translator no, from. No, not a professor. Translator. Translator. Uh, translator yeah. from Chinese language, right? Right. And a cricket fan. <laughs> oh boy. Like my son, like who is a son, player. Not a player. <laughs> <laughs> and Laura, how are you doing, Laura? Unmute your mic, Laura. I'm a really good juggler. I'm, um, but I miss a lot. But. Um, as I'm juggling, I'm trying to manage a, a lot of things as we all are. Um, it's just such a strange landscape we're all living in now. Very strange. But the poetry is a way of saving us in a sense, I, I feel. Thank you for doing this, oh, thank Hassan. You. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that you came on and uh, presenting your work uh after all these things happening around us is uh it says uh, yes you're right it's a healing process we have to be busy with something it looks like we lost our friend from poland um uh, let's wait for him to come back uh in the meantime we are going to go for the second round and amir you are one. Uh, please go for your second round of poetry. Okay. Can you hear me, Amir? Yes, I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Go ahead. When I came to God, when I came to God, I came blind. I heard all around me the song of his longing. His growl, his sigh, his, slaughter, his slaughtered lowing. I touched with my palms his leaves, his down, the breath of his mouth, his back still warm. When I came to God, I came naked, tainted by his smell, voice, and handprints. He was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. He was expelled, a fugitive, and vagabond. When I came to God, I whispered to him, know yourself, and I hugged myself. When I came to God, I came alone. And the second poem is titled, The Orpheus Prayer. Death and yet more death, sand and more sand. We have stood in the square hungry to be and like mountain shadows, cover the city with pictures of a waking sleep. Was she there or wasn't she? A stranger in my body, able and yet unable, I tried the air. How many more years will we walk this dead sense? The mountain is glimpsed like a vision or a mirage. Scents move on underfoot like a memory with no beginning and each place is every place. Does the way go up or down? Are you here behind my gaze? Is my gaze there ahead of me? Where have we come from? Alone the two of us have crossed vast marshes on the slowly melting faces of the drowned. For years we've been immortal. In the attic in Amsterdam we saw terrible sorrow in the window. How much longer 
shall we walk between death and death, sand and sand. A new past give us, a new death give us. Give us this day the life of the day. Yeah. I can't hear you for some reason. Sorry, I muted myself because of uh, listening to you. <laughs> it happens, live show. <laughs> I said, uh, the book you gave me from uh, Greece, I read the book and then later you sent me another one uh, and we published some of the poems on Shabda Gosu last issue. You received the issue, right? Yes, of course. Okay. All right, so stand by, let's uh, listen to other poets, then we are going to talk about the importance of translation, like we are all, almost all reading from translation. <laughs> okay, my friend uh, Pizoraska is back. Uh, hello, welcome back. Hi. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to see you again. <laughs> yes. So uh, I ask everybody the question, how are you doing? How is your, uh, I mean, corona situation in your city? Uh, how are you doing otherwise? Uh, okay, if you want to say something about corona, I hope to show you my latest work. This is art book, yes. Uh, art book, uh, especially made, it is only four pieces, four pieces in the world. One will be in the uh, Bibliotheque of Congress in New York. And if you open it, okay, you see, yes, oh, now it's much better. We are opening. This is my Corona time and Corona you have inside, for example. My music, a uh -huh. special piece uh, for uh, Corona time. And, you know, this is a very different time in Poland. Uh, if you have no animal, for example, you ought to go uh, with dog leads. Okay, we have a special dog lead. And on the end of this, we have a special stick with music, yes? You will not be uh, alone. You will be with music on the walk to, to give some special Corona time in Poland. Yes, okay. I believe that's the fun way to enjoy bad time like this. So great! Could you uh, now present your poem, the second round? Two more okay. poems, please. Go uh, ahead. What do you want? For example, you want uh, first in Polish or first in English? One poem in Polish, if you could. Go ahead. Okay. Ready? I come in. Rozbieram belki z pogruchadanego domu. Ostawiam ściany od nowa do pionu. Wstawiam... Tylko czy to wszystko, wszystko co niby jeszcze ma nadejść, jest jeszcze coś... Coś jeszcze jest warte. Rozbieram belki i płaczę ukradkiem. Nie mówię tego tak naprawdę, nie mówię nikomu. Miłość już była, trochę zużyta, trochę przegniła. Słowa, co jak pochodnie świeciły, wypadły na trawę, spaliły korzenie. Czy coś jeszcze wyrośnie? Tego nikt, tego dziś, dziś jeszcze nie wie. Dziś nie wie. It was in Poland, in Polish language and now uh, i will read this in english okay yes go ahead i take apart the beams of the shuttered house set the walls once more upright i fit new windows to the world supposedly open but is that all all this is supposedly still to come there is something else something else it's worthwhile I take apart the beams and weep to myself. I don't actually say it, I tell no one. Love has been a little worn out, a little left or rot to rot. Words which lit up like torches, spilled on the grass, scorched its roots. Will anything else grow? 
no one, not today, not yet, no one knows. The second poem, are you ready? Yes, go ahead. The poet's word. It is about uh, our theme today, about uh, translation, about the meaning of the poetry, okay? The poet's word is the word of the world. It's sound, color, taste. Once I wrote, I am a flower drinking light. I am light. Those few words are all I have. Those few words with all my heart I give today to you. I am a flower drinking light. I am light. Drinking light on the wondrous silk road, a path to meet to unmet, a path down to the river from which we all draw strange, strange and wisdom. The wisdom is above all, above these visions, nations, languages, above reality. The poet's word is the word of the word. It's sound, color, taste. I am a flower drinking light. I am light, identity. The poet's identity is his castle, stood on the highest rock, hiding in boundless anger, halating clouds, or built out the, the safe golden hues of mino blooming. In hope, I am a flower, drinking light, I am light. Each flower, each flower needs someone to tend it, to bring the wondrous pollen already to multiply stanza by stanza, verse by verse. I am a flower drinking light. I am light. The poet's word is the word of the world. It's sound, color, taste, poetry. Poetry is not marks on mulberry paper or rice paper. Poetry is a fine restaurant meal, becoming a symphony of flavors, melting like caramel in our mouth or unripe lemon bringing a sour grimace to the face, a sound. I am a flower drinking light. I am light. Poetry, ah, poetry. Yes, it's poetry, the subtle secret, the secret that you wish with all your strength to meet, that you wish, that you wish to return to on a cloudy day or a day like ripe cherries. A secret to which every recipient has their own intimate key. I am a flower drinking light. I am light. A poet's myth is a route, a road to the blissful perdition of love, to steal the and explanation of the virgin universes, galaxies distant, and near unknown planets. I am a flower drinking light. I am light. The poet words is the word of the world. It's sound, color, taste. I am a flower drinking light. I am light. Thanks to you all and thanks to you, with you and with you all. Remember, remember please, you are a flower drinking light. You are the light. Thank you. I'm a flower I'm drinking light. light. Wow. <laughs> yes, remember. <laughs> You are a flower drinking light. You are the light. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Now, Laura. Uh, yes, um, let's uh, have the second round of your poem. Okay. Um, I'm going to read uh, a poem that was published in uh, on the Edge of the Hudson by Stan Barkland's uh, Cross-Cultural Communications. And the cover was by B.B. Barkin. And then the poem was republished in Arms by Guernica uh, Editions. And the cover was done by Gregory Corso. And I have the painting back there. And um, I was going to read a poem by, uh, maybe I'll still read that. But the first poem is very short, Perfect Circles. The best teacher I ever had told me I was the best student he'd ever had. The best lover I ever had told me I was the best lover he'd ever had. The man I loved most didn't love me most when I loved him, needed me when I didn't need him. I used to use a compass in school, could never make perfect circles. 
And shall I read the second poem? Okay. Second poem is from The Best Lover. Um, and it's called Living Together for Gregory Corso. I lived with Gregory for a year, or rather, he lived with me. And though it was only a year, it seemed like 20. At night on my brown velvet sofa, he would write in his Chinese red silk embroidered covered journal with his brown ink Montblanc pen that he had asked me to buy for him and to get one for myself, though I never did. The TV would be on and in memory always turn to a baseball game. In the mornings, we would make the run to Christie Street for him to pick up what he needed to survive the day. At this point, I was on a hopeless mission to get him to stop, to get rid of his years of bad habits. I was wearing my invisible Wonder Woman cape, but I was never successful like Wonder Woman. Sometimes we would go out to Maxwell's Plum, but we, he could never sit for more than half the lunch. He took me to see the movie Napoleon, but we only stayed for half. It was incredibly long. He stayed in my apartment and painted a self-portrait of himself. He kept changing the face, even once made himself black. He had the skyline of San Francisco behind him. He painted a portrait of his friend Kerouac. He po painted a portrait of me and my eyes turquoise, though they are green, and even made the sky turquoise. He made me look like a bitch, but the colors were beautiful. We went to San Francisco to find an apartment but came back to New York when we were called that Ted Berrigan had died. There was never, I realized, a chance that we would make it. We were like a fragile, homemade candle in slight, uh, its slight flickering wick, just waiting for the oncoming tsunami wave to blow it out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I could see the picture of every poem. You are, <laughs> you are designing poem actually i see great excellent uh let me see where john is um john's right john can you hear me okay yes, excellent all right so we could see your picture though you can or you cannot we can't well i think that's your issue not mine so you can okay that's Laura. Find me. <laughs> I don't know. Go me. ahead. Uh, you read your we poem. We can watch you while I read. That's okay. I don't care. Okay. Doesn't you matter. read your poem, and uh, uh, that's fine as long as we hear you. I can be anybody. I certainly did not remove my image. Anyway. These are some very, very hard acts to follow. And I should tell everybody that a lot of what I write is comic poetry, and a lot of what I write is poetry about animals. So after you've heard a lot about the human condition, I'm going to read two poems about cats. The first is called Feral, and it is about the cats forced into exile by Long Island University. Two of them I brought to my home. And the poem, this poem, is about a black and white cat called Bitmap. It's called Feral. You came to me untouchable, out of the woods, eyes burning, waiting for me, offering to walk side by side down the slope to your house, inching closer. And as soon as I fed you and turned my back to walk away, you ate. Uprooted by cruelty, you came to this house, untouchable, eyes burning, but with a new stillness, studying me, sitting, waiting for conversation before food. Uh, we are very sorry that we could not see her picture, well, but we could still okay. hear her, ladies and gentlemen. She is presenting her second poem for the second round. 
from the universe. I'm in deep space somewhere. This one is called, is that you, Grandma? And you need to know one word, which is Lidopinarius. And that is the genus of shrimp. The cat is a Lidopinarian. She will only eat shrimp and dry cat food, but not any shrimp only heated shrimp, cooked or raw, though never the tail end. All dry food is acceptable, but if I try to offer her a delicacy like duck liver or chicken breast, she curls up her nose and says, feh, just like my grandmother who might have returned in the body of this cat. That's it, that, folks. Thank you so you. much. Uh, you. Um, somehow we could not all. see your face, but we could. Uh, we listen to you, and uh, I stand by. See if you could fix your. Uh, uh, probably somehow you you know press or unmindfully press the uh, 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 camera button. See if you could unmute the camera button. Anyway, uh, now is my time, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm gonna read two poems as well. Uh, this is 1051, so we have about nine minutes left. S let's see how we could do with the time. Uh, recently, there is a lot of talking about race, uh, especially in the US, but this poem, I wrote this poem long time ago about let's say 20, 25 years ago, the dark chamber of racism. This is a sonnet. You have nested in hidden holes since the beginning of the very dawn of creation. Your body grew fat at times while you got even a slight chance, you looked for trends and emerged like a snake from your hideout. At the end of violence and killing, twisting your neck and shaking your tail, you again slide back into the cold, quiet, and copious dark chamber. Your eyes are still vicious and tireless. You are in the center of terror, I know. For centuries, you skillfully span the wheel of conflict, keeping your face so calm and quiet as if it were of a saint or prophet. We get tired, bloody, and burned, and then retreat, but still fail to break your skull. That was the first poem and the second one. And the last one is been translated in many languages. When God is dead, uh, I'll read only in English because of the time. When God is dead, I will swim in the river. I will play football and get a lot of fans to cheer for it. When God is dead, I will climb the big tree up in Forest Park near my house and kill all the squirrels to save my garden full of vegetables. When God is dead, I will eat a tuna fish sandwich and five fried cockroaches as a side order. And ask you guys to rethink about Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, and Krishna for whom you have been killing each other for centuries. When God is dead, I will stop writing poems and believe me, my lady, I will be in a bed with you for three consecutive days and nights and will never be separated. Thank you so much for listening. Let me, thank you, thank you. Let me bring up all my guests. Though uh, I still 
we can see uh, John Digby, but uh, if you care, uh, we promise that we are going to, going to talk about uh, the importance of translation. Uh, let's start with Amir, because your poem has been translated into more than 50 languages. And what do you think? Well, uh, I don't know how many target languages you know, but what do you think about translation? What's the importance of translation to you? Well, uh, you are a translator and I'm a translator. So let's talk about it from our end, because when my uh, poetry is published in Chinese, I really cannot evaluate it. But uh, since we don't have much time, I'll say one thing. It's uh, uh, translation is art, is part of poetry. I see it on the same spectrum. And you need uh, inspiration for that. And the real adventure of uh, translation is not just giving it uh, words in the target language, in your language, and not even poetically, uh, you know, phrasing of it, but each poem, each poet that you translate should be different in your language. If I translate uh, from Greek, uh, Sappho or Archilochos, if I translate Shakespeare or whoever, uh, what I really want, the real adventure for me, is to become this poet for a moment. I want to be Sappho, I want to be Shakespeare, I want to be a translate. And this makes it interesting because you really get into the guts of uh, this uh, poetic mind that for whom you give new words in your language. And I think if you keep to that, it's a thrilling adventure. You said it very well that uh, at some point you are the Shakespeare of Hebrew in order to translate Shakespeare into Hebrew. I'm the Shakespeare of Bengali in order to translate Shakespeare in Bengali. Uh, in the last uh, uh, program, I said one of the great Bengali poets uh, of the 30s, Chudindranath Dotto, who translated Shakespeare into Bengali, was great. But recently, some of the non poets who are not poets, not great poets, translated Shakespeare doesn't make sense to me. So, say it very well. Great. Uh, Eric, what is your uh, thought about that? Uh, you know, it's uh, very important to feel something. You ought to know something about the language uh, in which you will be presented or uh, in which you will have contact. Uh, we have uh, different families of languages. Uh, we ought to speak a lot of languages, but, uh, for example, Chinese, it's not possible to do uh, a good translation without uh, China people. Yes, it is very, very difficult. When I was in China, we were uh, translating in life, but it was totally destroy, destroy everything. Yes, because uh, we are not talking about the simple words. We are talking about the union of words, of families of words. This is art. This is the, the same what said uh, Amir, that is very, very important to feel inside, in your heart. Yes, your heart you ought to be full, full up of the words, of the imagination, of the illusion. Uh, and you ought to understand this. If you can't understand, you will not uh, be a good translator. Very well put. You are talking about not do the instant translation, which I went to China too, and some of them are doing just standing there. What I was speaking, they're translating like that. Uh, that's a very good point. So you have to, as Amir also said, you have to feel it. You have to be there. You have to be a person. Great. Can Laura, I jump in your, your a take on it. I'm yeah, sorry. go ahead. Uh, you, I just want to John, jump go in ahead. on the subject of Chinese yeah, translation please. because my Not husband really does sure that with a Chinese language. But what I want to say about translations for me. Laura, I'm hold on, hold on. John is John is talking. Oh, I thought you said Laura. Sorry. Yeah, but John. Okay, okay, go ahead, John. Okay. Anyway, their view of this has turned out to be something like jazz improvisation. 
because making a literal translation from Chinese is not only impossible, but it never catches either the tone or cultural context of certain words. So their approach, and they've done several books together, has always been more of an improvisational view of how to treat mostly classical Tang poems, how to treat them as modern poems that can be read and understood for this century. So that's another approach. Thank you so much for adding your version. Yes, that's why we see Baudelaire has been translated into English every 10 years. Uh, is a different translation put forward from Baudelaire. Laura, go ahead. We have so, passed the time, but we'll take another minute. Very, very fast. Um, I have translated with my 23, my old partner who died, Michael Benedict, for 23 years. He was a major translator. I think what I learned from him I put my trust in the poets who are translators so they get to the emotional truth. Even if they have to change some of the wording, I trust the poets to get to the feeling of my poems and they're fine to, tra to change them where they need to. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Amir, for being here, presenting your poem, coming your translation. Uh, Laura, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Eric, thank, thank you so everybody. much, John. Thank you. Uh, we started it last week. The next one is going to be on the 5th of September and the following on is the 12th of September. So far, we have this four session. So please ask your friend to watch it and watch it further. And uh, uh, thank you from Shop the Good Show. Send your poems to Shop the Good Show. We will see each other again. And goodbye from New York. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Stay Thank safe. you. It was a great honor to be with you. <laughs> we really enjoyed being with you too.